hi everyone uh, welcome to another episode of miracle baby a series of videos uh, informative videos about infertility and its management i am now here at my home in angeles city and i'm so thankful that uh, you are tuning in with me and uh, you're uh, keeping yourself safe and isolating yourselves in your homes while it's not possible for us to meet each other uh, face to face. I am Dr. Eileen Kosi, uh, infertility specialist and medical director of Kosi Fertility Clinic and IVF Center here in Angeles City. It is the first IVF center north of uh, Manila and uh, only the seventh in the entire Philippines. So, dito po muna tayo sa bahay ko, makikita. Uh, pero hopefully, in the near future, I'll be able to film one video in our center to tell you more about uh, the services that we offer and of course, uh, more about uh, my background and our staff. So, sec uh, welcome to our second episode, which is a sequel to the first one. So, kung hindi nyo pa po napapanood yun, I encourage you to watch that one. It's uh, entitled, Conceiving During Quarantine. Dahil ang idea nga po is, I want to... Uh, empower you with the information that you need in order to increase your chances of conceiving on your own during this time na hindi pa po kayo pwedeng uh, magpa-check up sa isang infertility specialist na kagaya ko. So, um, it is a more general uh, video, an overview of all the different causes of infertility at kung paano nyo pwedeng tulungan ninyong sarili. Uh, but now, ang topic na napili po natin is still very common but it's more uh, specific na po sa isang group of uh, patients na um, fortunately sila habang tumatagal actually nag improve yung chances nila mabuntis uh, mag not like the other causes of infertility. What I am referring to is this syndrome. Okay? Yung tinatawag na polycystic ovary syndrome. Kaya I entitled it because paki-explain please. Dahil it's very common for me to see women at the clinic who are asking for a second opinion dahil dati na silang na-diagnose as having PCOS at hindi po nila masyadong naintindihan at nag-worry sila kung anong pwede mangyari in the future at kung paano po ito uh, magagamot. No? So, when we say uh, syndrome, ang ibig sabihin lang po nito is hindi pa alam ng mga scientifico kung ano ang cause ng condition na to. In fact, we cannot call it a disease. Hindi siya sakit. So, it's a group of symptoms na sama-sama yan. Usually, it's a cluster of symptoms na nakikita sa isang group of uh, patients. So, in this case, sa mga pasyenteng irregular ang menstruation o kaya hindi nabubuntis. No? So, in fact, ang polycystic ovary syndrome has nothing to do with cysts. Kasi, kaya po tayo nabuwari when we hear that term dahil dun sa cyst at ang iniisip natin ay meron tayong tumor o kaya cancer na pwede nating ikamatay. No? When in fact, ang cyst po kasi is a term, a medical, a scientific term which only describes a structure in our body that is fluid filled. So, meron tubig sa loob kaya siya tinawag na cyst but not necessarily it's a pathology. No? So, normal na nakikita ito sa katawan ng isang uh, babae at ang itong mga cysts na to are, are actually mga structures that contain our eggs. So, nandun yung mga itlog natin. At uh, yan ang tinatawag na follicles. So, ang mga follicles po ng isang babae, marami yan pagka pinanganak and then nababawasan every time na nagre-regla and then eventually pag nagmenopause na, ibig sabi, sabihin po nun, ay naubos na ang ating mga itlog. So, uh, every month, ang isa sa mga small follicles na to na immature pa ay lumalaki, nagiging dominant follicle, nagde-develop into a dominant follicle at pagka umabot na siya sa isang certain size na alam natin mature na yung egg na laman nito ay pumuputok siya at nawawala dahil nare-release yung itlog uh, into the pelvic cavity at hopefully makatch po siya ng fallopian tube at mag-meet with the sperm of your husband para kayo ay mabuntis. Pero kung wala kayong asawa o kaya ayaw nyo naman mabuntis, of course, ayaw natin mangyari yun. Um, ang nangyayari is uh, namamatay itong uh, itlog na to at uh, it will cause us to menstruate uh, two weeks uh, later. That's why yung mga babaeng hindi nag-ovulate every month 
uh, naiipon yung mga maliliit na cyst sa ating ovaries kaya dumami na sila kaya siya tinawag na polycystic ovary syndrome so ano po ang signs and symptoms ng ticos no? so usually ang reason bakit pumupunta ang isang pasyente sa kanyang ob is because of her irregular menstrual cycles and that is because hindi nga siya nangingitlo so kuminsan hindi ang regla niya is every 3 months lang or every 6 months or once a year no, obviously Ang reason bakit hindi siya nagme-mens ay hindi siya nangingitlo o kaya magme-mens ka nga every month pero paunti-unti lang, spotting lang, akala mo totoong menstruation na yun. So uh, that's one of the most common symptoms ng uh, polycystic ovary syndrome that will bring you to your OBGYN. The other conditions or symptoms uh, that you manifest as a patient who has polycystic ovary syndrome is something na actually when you walk into the office, into my clinic, uh, may idea na ako kung ano ang problema mo dahil obviously you have signs of hyperandrogenism. Ibig sabihin, pwede mataas pala yung level ng male hormone in your blood. So it can be either clinical or bioclinical lang. Clinical, ibig sabihin, obvious na nakikita sa iyong pangangatawan or baka biochemical lang. No? So walang obvious symptoms pero mataas ang male hormone mo in your blood. So when we say clinical hyperandrogenism, it can manifest in one of these uh, ways. So ang pinaka common sa kanila is yung acne, no? So ibig sabihin, yan nagkaka-pimples tayo kahit hindi na tayo teenager or lalo siyang lumalala habang nagkakaedad, so 27, 29 years old ka na, 32 and yet you still have a uh, persistent breakout. So sometimes pupunta ka sa isang dermatologist when in fact kailangan ka rin magpa-check up sa isang OB-GYN, no? So Ang PICOS ay isang uh, condition where uh, kailangan iba-ibang klaseng doktor ang nakakaalam nito para ma-manage siya ng tama. So, I usually get referrals from dermatologists dahil alam nga nila na ang cause ng uh, breakouts ng kanilang pasyente who's complaining of uh, severe acne may possibly be due to uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. The other manifestation of hyperandrogenism is pwede namang hirsutism. Ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon tayo ng facial hair no, in the upper lip, sa chin, or sideburns, or even yung nagkakaroon ng buhok dito sa chest area, sa gitna ng ating trunk. So yung mga balbon na maraming buhok sa arms and legs, usually hindi po yan dahil sa hyperandrogenism that is usually uh, due to genetics. Okay? So, ang type of uh, hyperhirsutism uh, that is related to PICOS is yung nasa katawan, sa midline, as well as yung facial hair. Uh, yung iba naman po, ang manifestation nila is nalalagas ang buhok, yung tinatawag na male pattern baldness that can also be uh, due to hyperandrogenism. Okay? So, another feature of women who have polycystic ovary syndrome pero hindi naman po kailangan nito na criteria para ma-diagnose as having PICOS is obesity or overweight. So kung kayo po ay uh, medyo nasa heavier side at ang taba ng katawan natin is mostly uh, nandito sa chan yung ating abdominal uh, fat na tinatawag instead of yung nasa hip area ito ang type of obesity na usually correlated with PICOS. So, paano natin malalaman kung meron tayong abdominal obesity? Uh, so, you can compute for your waist to hip ratio. So, i-measure natin ang waist at saka yung hip. Tapos, i-divide yung measurement sa waist to hip. If this is more than 0.85, then most probably that is consistent nga with abdominal obesity and not yung pear shape, yung apple shape. Ang mas uh, may tendency na correlated with polycystic ovary syndrome. So, how does PICOS cause infertility? Dahil yun naman po ang, I'm sure, reason bakit kayo nanonood dito sa video na to is dahil gusto po ninyong mabuntis. So, kailangan malaman natin bakit hindi, hindi pa nangyayari yun. No? So, kung bagong kasal lang po kayo, at uh, less than one year pa lang kayong nagsasama at ngayon pa lang kayo nakakapag-contact regularly dahil nasa ECQ tayo, nakakapag-contact kayo ng two or three times a week pero less than a year, we cannot really say na uh, kayo ay meron ng infertility problem. No? Kasi ang chance of getting pregnant in one month is only 20%. So after one year, nasa 85% na yan. So kung more than one year na po kayo nagsasama, 
Kung ka gumagamit ng any form of contraception, yes, we can label you already as having uh, an infertility problem. So, you can come see us right away sa ating center kung ganon. No? Uh, pero yung mga kababaihan na more than 35 years old na or may uh, previous history na na sakit no? at hindi naman dahil sa polycystic ovary syndrome, of course, we encourage you to seek consultation as early as possible after the lockdown. No? So, ang pinaka-main cause ng infertility ng isang pasyente na may PCOS is, of course, anovulation. No? So, hindi ka nagre-release ng egg every month at walang pwedeng ma-fertilize na egg ang sperm ni husband kahit na gano'n katagal kayo maghintay at ilang months pa ng quarantine nang hihintayin natin or kahit na gano'n kadalas kayo mag-contact sa isang buwan. Okay? Kung walang itlog, walang pwedeng ma-fertilize na sperm. Uh, ang similya ni husband. So, needless to say, ang other prerequisites para mag-untis ka, of course, dapat healthy yung sperm ni husband and of course, walang barado dapat ang tubo ng matres natin. No? So, I just created this acronym, SIM or SIM, para hindi tayo ma-mislead no? uh, dun sa uh, idea natin or notion natin kung paano tayo mag-untis mabisa, hindi lang kailangan na nangingitlog tayo, dapat healthy yung similya as well as healthy ang matres. So, SIM is SIM. So, who are at risk to have PCOS? Sino po ba ang mga at risk na merong PCOS? Para malaman natin kung ikaw nga ay may PCOS or wala kahit na hindi ka pa nagpapacheck up. So, tingnan natin ang ating mga kamag-anak kasi ang sabi nga nila, ang PCOS is actually genetic. In fact, it's related to a genetic condition na very common uh, sa lahat ng race, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, yung diabetes. So, kung may lahi kayo ng diabetes, um, baka baka may tendency na ikaw ay meron ding polycystic ovary syndrome or even pre-diabetic ka na din. In fact, uh, ang mga some authors term PCOS as diabetes type 3. No? Alam naman natin type 1 and type 2 diabetes pero uh, kaya lang nila tinerm as diabetes type 3 ang PCOS is because yun nga it's correlated to something about our blood sugar at saka genetic ang cause, no? So of course, I will not explain to you kung anong ibig sabihin itong uh, slide na to but it just goes to show na hindi pa talaga masyadong klaro kung ano ba ang nagkukos ng polycystic ovary syndrome but it is a vicious cycle may kinalaman dyan yung ating brain yung pituitary gland dahil yan ang nagproduce ng hormones, yung FSH follicle stimulating hormone at LH luteinizing hormone, these are the two hormones na nagsasabi sa ating ovaries na magproduce ng follicle and to cause ovulation at uh, yun, may kinalaman din nga yung pagkataas ng male hormone in our blood at uh, may kinalaman din yung hyperinsulinism or insulin resistance dahil hindi pumapasok sa mga cells natin yung glucose dahil hindi natin, hindi tayo sensitive dun sa sarili nating insulin at may kinalaman din po yung taba sa ating uh, katawan. So I failed to mention earlier na hindi po lahat ng mga may picos ay matataba. Meron din pong may picos na payat o kaya normal ang body weight. So hindi criteria or hindi importante na isali dun sa criteria ng diagnosis ang obesity or polycystic ovary syndrome. But how do we diagnose picos kung sa ganun? Dahil napakahirap nga nitong uh, ma-explain, uh, there's a group of doctors, yung mga specialists who met together uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken, in the year 2003, nag-meeting po sila sa Rotterdam at pinag-usapan nila kung paano ba natin idadiagnose ang isang babae yung merong PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome and they came up with this criteria. So, 1, 2, and 3. Number 1 is oligo-anovulation. Ibig sabihin, paminsan-minsan or never nangingitlog ang isang babae kaya irregular ang kanyang menstrual cycles. Hyperandrogenism, tumataas ang male hormone niya, mas mataas kesa sa female hormone, and it can manifest clinically as acne, facial hair, hirsutism, or alopecia, or even biochemically, kahit na makinis ang kutis ng isang babae, pero mataas yung hormone, male hormone niya sa blood that can also uh, be a sign of hyperandrogenism, and then lastly, and should I say the least important criteria is actually the polycystic looking ovaries in either one or both of your ovaries on ultrasound. So as of the last time I checked, it's still 12 small follicles or small cysts in one or both of your ovaries. Pero nagbabago po ang, ang consensus ngayon. I think uh, tumaas na to 25. So baka by the time that you see this video, nag-iba na po ang criteria. Pero it suffices to say na... Um, 
Yon, hindi pa natin masyadong klaro kung paano nga dapat natin i-diagnose itong condition na to, pero hindi kailangan yung tatlong criteria are present. So, pwede yung kahit na dalawa lang dito, or yung tatlo. Pag tatlo, of course, it's more severe. Yun ang tinatawag na classic type ng PICOS. So, pwede yung wala kang maliliit na cyst sa ovaries by ultrasound and yet you have oligoanovulation and you have signs of hyperandrogenism that is still considered as PICOS. So, wag po kayong uh, mag-isip na gumaling na kayo from PICOS dahil the next time na nagpa-ultrasound ka na wala na yung mga small cyst sa ovaries so, ang PICOS po hindi gumagaling. Uh, parang diabetes. Pag sinabi may PICOS ka, it's for life. So, importante yung malaman yan habang bata tayo so we can prevent the long-term uh, complications. Uh, just like diabetes, yung na, uh, pag nandiyan na siya, uh, kung tama ang pagkakadiagnose sa inyo, kahit na ano pa ang makita sa ultrasound, next time, you have to be wary of the possible long-term effects kung dati na kayong na-diagnose correctly as having PICOS. So, there are some tests that we can do to help us no, confirm yung diagnosis nga kasi kung minsan hindi masyadong obvious. So, we can do a an FSH and LH test. Ang FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. LH is luteinizing hormone. So, sa isang babaeng may PICOS, usually mataas na mataas ang LH, uh, almost three times the level of FSH. Whereas sa isang babaeng walang PICOS, usually pantay lang yun. Uh, ang TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone so we also want to check for that in women na hindi nang iniflog kasi kung minsan ang dahilan pala is hypothyroid tayo at makikita ito uh, by doing the serum TSH makikita natin na mataas siya than normal as well as yung mga babaeng merong hyperprolactinemia uh, mataas ang prolactin in a blood kaya hindi siya nang iniflog pero not necessarily meron siyang PICOS. So, these two conditions can also present with an ovulation and therefore, hindi rin sila nagre-regla ng normal. No? So, pwede rin natin i-confirm ang um, level ng testosterone in the blood if it's not so obvious na mataas ang um, male hormone. Clinically, we can do it through a blood test, yung serum testosterone and we can also request for a more accurate test. So, sa, sa aking palagay, ito yung pinaka magandang test for PICOS which is AMH or anti malarian hormone. This is a reflection of the number of the small follicles na nasa ovaries natin, yung tinatawag na ovarian reserve. So, ang normal na AMH level sa walang PICOS is between 2 to 4 nanograms per ml. So, kung medyo mataas siya, nasa around 5 or 6, then yes, most probably you do have uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. Okay? Pero ang importante yung differential natin, diagnosis, ibig sabihin huwag tayo agad magkoconclude na meron na tayong PICOS unless pumunta tayo sa isang doktor dahil yung other possibility naman is kaya hindi ka nang itlog pala is not because hindi nagmamature ang iyong mga small follicles but because ubus na pala yung mga follicles na yun, paubos na. No? So ang tawag dito is uh, DOR or Diminished Ovarian Reserve. So... Uh, of course, kung bata pa kayo, nasa around 20s or early 30s, baka hindi nyo pa iisipin na ganito nga ang condition ninyo. Uh, pero do not jump into conclusion na picos na agad ang problema dahil it's really possible na kahit bata pa kayo, ay nauubusan na pala kayo ng itlog sa inyong ovary. So what is the treatment for picos? Paano ba ito ginagamot? So ang gamot sa picos is depende lang kung ano yung kinokomplain mo sa iyong doktor. So, of course, kung pumunta ka sa akin, wala ka namang asawa, you're single, at concerned ka lang about your irregular menstrual cycle, pwedeng nagko-complain ka rin about your acne, breakouts, at uh, uh, may boyfriend ka at ayaw mo pang mabuntis, of course, ang ibibigay sa iyo ng doktor mo is a an oral contraceptive pill or what uh, we call a birth control pill. So, magtataka kayo dahil yun nga, ang complaint ninyo probably is infertility tapos pumupunta kayo sa doktor at bibigyan ka ng gamot na will cause you to prevent uh, pregnancy. So, you have to make it very clear to your OBGYN pag bumisita kayo sa kanya kung ano po ba, ano ang uh, gusto nyo uh, masolve na problem. No? Para hindi kayo unnecessarily nabibigyan ng pills kung ang purpose niyo pala is gusto niyo magpabuntis. Another type of medication na pwedeng ibigay, ito naman po para dun sa mga uh, kompleto na ang pamilya, pero irregular ang menstruation or nakakaroon ng heavy menstrual uh, bleeding, 
Um, pero wala nang planong magbuntis. Yeah, sometimes we also put in an intrauterine device. Hindi siya regular na intrauterine device. It releases progesterone. Sustained release siya sa loob ng matres. So, it's like an IUD. No? So, hindi ka rin magbuntis pag binagyan ka ng isang uh, IUD that uh, ang purpose nga is to help with your heavy menstrual uh, bleeding. But if your problem is infertility, and of course, we want to correct uh, the anovulation, we will give you ovulation inducing agents no? in the form of either clomiphene or letrozole or sometimes even injectable medication kung hindi kayo magre-respond dito sa mga oral uh, drugs. No? But these drugs are not available uh, over the counter. We have to make sure na meron tayong prescription coming from uh, your OBGYN. So sometimes we also give you an insulin sensitizer in the form of metformin kung na-detect natin na meron kayong insulin resistance. So, ang usual test na pinapagawa sa mga PCOS patients is what we call the 75 grams OGTT or oral glucose tolerance test. Ibig sabihin, you do a fasting blood sugar and then may papainom sa inyo ng matamis and then after 2 hours, kukunan kayo ulit ng dugo. So, based on that, kung uh, you are deemed as having insulin resistance, yes, your doctor might give you uh, metformin. No? So, ang metformin, nakakatulong yan not only to uh, to control your uh, insulin resistance, it, it can also help you lose weight, it can help you ovulate, and then help uh, prevent a miscarriage also. That's why tinutuloy natin ito pagka nabuntis ang isang pasyente while on metformin. Uh, a long time ago, we also used to do surgery for patients who had PCOS, pero nowadays, hindi na po masyadong ginagawa, especially itong ovarian wedge resection. No? Pero a long time ago, nung walang laparoscopy, ya, yeah, maoperahan ka para sa PCOS, dahil bibiyakin ang ovary mo, bubuksan na parang ano, amanga <laughs> or avocado, and then para ma-release yung content niya na male hormone. Uh, but recently, ang uh, na-develop na another procedure, pero hindi na rin masyadong ina-advocate ngayon, yung laparoscopic ovarian drilling. Ang laparoscopy is a minimally invasive procedure, no, na maliliit lang ang butas, we put a camera called the laparoscope dito sa pusod, pinapalobo ang chan, at pinapanood sa isang TV monitor, no, ang loob ng katawan natin, and we put another two small holes dito sa side. So, ang ginagawa dyan, as the term implies, ovarian drilling, actually drill holes, into your ovaries. Uh, konti lang na host kasi baka maubos yung itlog natin. So, ang purpose lang nun is para ma-release yung male hormone. And this will cause you to ovulate and menstruate uh, for the next 6 months. So, hopefully, mabuntis ka na within 6 months after the laparoscopic ovarian drilling. Dahil usually, after 6 months, kung hindi ka pa nabubuntis, babalik ka lang dun sa dating problema. That's why, hindi na siya masyadong ina-advise ngayon. Not like uh, a few years ago. So, what can I do to maximize my chances of conceiving spontaneously? No? So, as I said, um, many times before, ang polycystic ovary is the only condition na pwedeng i-delay. No? Dahil ito yung mga tipong habang tumatanda, so nung bata sila, pwedeng irregular ang menstrual cycles. And then, nung nagka-edad, saka sila naging regular at nabubuntis na sila mag -isa. Tapos, uh, usually, yan, sunod-sunod na ang mga pregnancies. Dahil nga, nag-start na silang mag ovulate at a later age. No? So, ang pwede natin gawin is to cut this vicious cycle. Itong pathophysiology na minention ko earlier, if anywhere in this circle, ma-break natin siya, and usually, ang pwede natin makontrol lang dito is yung ating adipose tissue, yung taba sa ating katawan. So, basta na-break natin ang cycle na to, pwedeng biglang mag-ovulate ka na sa sarili mo, ng sarili mo. No? So, how can we achieve that? Uh, I cannot say uh, enough about the benefits of having a proper diet. No? Ang gusto natin is plant-based. No? So, kung pwedeng puro fruits and vegetables, ang kakainin natin sa pang-araw-araw, more fish, less uh, chicken, beef, and pork. Tanggalin na natin ang uh, processed food, mga canned goods, fast food, at saka junk food. No? Uh, tanggalin na yung maalat, mamantika at matamis, bawasan ng kanin no? so wala na pong natira <laughs> pero yeah, I'm telling you the truth kung kaya ninyong gawin ito uh, malaki ang chance na bigla na lang kayo mabubuntis mag-isa, or at least magbemens kayo every month, no? so aside from diet, sabi ng mga scientifico, uh, diet alone is uh, effective, pero diet with exercise yan ang pinaka-effective na way para mag 
ma-correct natin ang uh, ating metabolic problem. So, whatever form of exercise ang kaya ninyong gawin, mga 30 minutes to 1 hour, mga 3 to 4 times a week, no? basta nasusustain nyo yan, ayaw natin ang biglaan, ayaw natin na uh, uh, bigla kayong papayat, and then pagka tumaba, mas mataba pa kayo kaysa, kaysa sa dati, uh, slowly lang, dahan-dahan na naglulus ng weight, Uh, I suggest the best form, the best time to exercise. Ano ko kung magagagri yung iba is, um, yeah, after dinner. So pwede kayo mag dinner ng medyo maaga, around five o'clock or six o'clock, and then yung exercise at around seven o'clock. Wag ka na kakain, inung ka na maraming tubig bago ka matulog. At uh, the next morning you eat a heavier breakfast, na no? tapos lighter yung lunch and then lightest yung dinner. So what are the long-term consequences of picos? So, ang PICOS is a condition na hindi lang uh, fertility ang natin ang naapektuhan. No? Kasi it will affect uh, our, our entire body. So, meron siyang consequences pag hindi tayo nag-ingat habang bata tayo. No? So, kahit na kunwari, nung anak ka na ng isa o dalawa, ayaw mo na magpabuntis, you still have to keep yourself healthy in order to, to prevent na umabot ka sa tinatawag na metabolic syndrome. So, ang metabolic syndrome is also a group of uh, conditions na related to uh, yung nga, patients na dati nang na-diagnose as having PICOS nung tumanda sila, ito ang nagiging sakit nila. Diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, hypercholesterolemia, obesity, no? even the risk for cancer uh, is higher pagka meron tayong PICOS. Anong klaseng cancer ang tinutukoy ko? Ang um, um, endometrial cancer. So, if you are diagnosed as having PICOS before at sinabihan ka na by ultrasound, kumakapal yung lining ng matres, yeah, ang iniisip natin dito is baka either meron ka ng endometrial hyperplasia, which is a pre-malignant condition, so pwede pang gamutin yan para hindi siya maging cancer. So, yun, hindi natin malalaman yan unless uh, nagawa yung ultrasound at na-measure yung kapal ng lining ng matres o yung endometrial thickness. Uh, sometimes, kailangan kang maraspa or magawa ng hysteroscopy, a procedure that will visualize yung loob ng cavity ng matres natin for us to be able to sample a part of the endometrial tissue para malaman natin kung ito ay hyperplasia nga or hopefully not naman, uh, yung nga, ang pinaka end point is yung uh, cancer. So, hindi ito nakikita sa pap smear. Ang tinitignan sa pap smear is yung cervix or cervical cancer. So, uh, Hopefully, nakatulong po itong video na pinasent natin sa inyo about uh, polycystic ovary syndrome at uh, sana masundan ninyo yung mga recommendations ko dahil sa panahong ito, hindi pa kayo pwedeng uh, makapagpa-check up dito sa aming center or even sa ibang OBGYN. No? So, I'm so thankful that I'm given this opportunity, this platform to help you and to reach out to you Uh, on the ways na paano uh, matulungan ang uh, inyong fertility uh, problem. So, hopefully sa susunod po, we can do a video in the center uh, at para makita din ninyo kung ano yung uh, mga services na ino-offer natin. But for now, uh, I would like to say goodbye, stay safe, and uh, stay tuned for our upcoming videos in the next uh, few weeks.